You're listening to the Fitness Matters Podcast with Paula B, and this is episode number 84. What is a thought? Hello, hello, my friends. Yes, I'm laughing as I often am. My dramatic intro. What is a thought? (laughs) I'm excited about this one today. I know, I know that this one... Well, here's why I'm excited. I'm excited for a couple of reasons, but mostly I'm excited because I know that this is one that is A, going to be incredibly helpful, and B, it's one that's kind of going to blow your mind. I love it when when we have these kind of simple and yet super complex and twisty, I call them onion episodes. I think I've referred to this before where we peel back one layer and then peel back another layer and then peel back another layer and find that there's just another layer and upon layer upon layer. This is Honestly, on its surface, it's an incredibly simple answer, and I'm going to give it to you right away as soon as I introduce myself, because I totally forgot to do that, because I keep doing this, where I keep forgetting to tell you who I am. Hi, I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. You can find me on YouTube and on any podcast platform where you listen to the Fitness Matters podcast, where every week we talk about the fitness matters that matter to you. This one... This one matters. If you are on any kind of a mindset journey and you have heard me or anybody talk about finding your thoughts and how helpful that is in order to help you get where you want to go about, in fact, if you listened to last week's episode about how finding the thought is what can help you get the results that you are looking for. So what is a thought? My friends, every single thing you think is a thought. And I know you understand that intellectually. I know that you're probably thinking something along the lines of, really, that's it? That's all you've got for me, Paula? (laughs) Or something. Or maybe something like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Or, Or whatever. I mean, anywhere in between is also okay. Whatever it is that you think about what I just said is a thought. And by thought, what I really mean here is it is optional, it is an opinion, it is something personal to you, and it is not a fact. When you think about it that way, you might be more inclined to argue with me. You might be a little bit more like, no, a lot of the things that I think I can prove, I have some evidence. I think a lot of the things that I think are pretty factual, especially as it comes to like things that we might think about ourselves. Like I'm great at math. I don't know why I came up with that as an example. I don't actually think that I'm great at math, but either way, whether I think I'm great at math or I think I'm not great at math, either one of those is a thought that I have about myself and my ability to do math. There is no objective, every single human being on the face of the planet could agree with it, standard for what great at math means. When we have thoughts like that, that sounds very factual, we we convince ourselves that we are thinking facts about our lives. I'm great at math. I'm having trouble losing weight. I love to run. I don't really enjoy broccoli. I, some of these examples, honestly, you guys, I'm just, I'm sitting here and I'm coming up with them off the top of my head. I actually don't think I'm super great at math. I'm not having trouble losing weight because I'm not losing weight right now. I'm actually doing a great job at maintaining my weight and I really like broccoli. So sometimes, sometimes I'm just giving you examples so that you might resonate with, with something specific. But here's what I want to tell you about all of those thoughts. The reason we know that they are thoughts and not facts is that facts don't create feelings for us. A thought creates a feeling for us. Here's a really simple example of something that we might think about. And the reason I'm telling you this example is because I am literally sitting here looking at my office chair. What we often do when we are going about our lives is we are thinking things that feel very factual because they are related to facts. I have a black 
leather, not really leather, pleather <laughs> office chair that I sit in every day. When I sit in my office chair, I don't think about the fact of my office chair. The fact of my office chair is that it exists, it is a certain height, it is made of black plastic that is supposed to be soft enough to feel like leather, and it has two arms, it has a back, I can raise it up or down, I can get a little lumbar support, it's adjustable, it has rolling wheels, I can roll it wherever I wanna go because I have a hard surface for a floor. Those are more factual items about the chair. Oftentimes, when I sit in it though, I will think something like, this is my favorite chair. And this is my favorite chair takes on the patina of fact because I have no need to dispel that as anything other than a truth in my mind. This is my favorite chair. It doesn't really affect me one way or another except that it totally does. This is my favorite chair is a thought. That thought creates a feeling of comfort for me. This is my favorite chair creates a feeling of satisfaction, of comfort, of favoriteness in me. This is a black pleather chair creates no feelings for me. That being a fact makes it very neutral. It is a fact, it is objective, it is something that I could prove. Anybody who cared to look at this chair or could look at this chair, could measure it, could decide what material it's made out of, could see how tall it is, see what color it is, see that it has wheels, all of those factual items about the chair can be proven. Everybody could agree on them. But when I think about the chair, when I notice the chair, when I'm sitting in the chair, when I'm doing anything, talking relentlessly about this chair, what I think is that it's my favorite chair. And that is what makes it a thought. Now here's the thing, that thought doesn't seem like any big deal. And this is where lots of us get caught up in looking for our thoughts, trying to find our thoughts. I make it sound like such a big deal when I'm telling you, oh, well, when you find your thoughts, you'll understand why you feel a certain way or why you're doing or not doing the things that you are doing or not doing and why you're getting the results that you're getting. The thought is the, the starting point. It's the spark of it all. But this is my favorite chair. I mean, yes, it creates a feeling of comfort and satisfaction in me, but those aren't especially strong feelings. And it doesn't really lead me to do anything other than sit in my chair when I'm working, or maybe, maybe when I'm sitting in a less comfortable chair, think longingly <laughs> of my favorite chair, my office chair, but it doesn't really do much. It's not big. It's not an epiphany that this is my favorite chair. It's just, it's just a thought. It's just an opinion that I have about a fact that could be proven. The fact that the chair exists, by the way, is the fact. So when I'm telling you to look for your thoughts, to notice your thoughts about things, you probably think that it needs to be an epiphany. It needs to be something monumental. It needs to be something that shouts out, this is a thought. But here we come back again to the very first thing that I told you, the thing that I'm going to tell you again, at least one more time. Every single thing you think is a thought. And that means that what you are thinking is not factual based on facts most of the time, lots of the time, based on evidence that you can find for yourself. Something like, I don't like broccoli. Well, I've had it, you know, 18 times in my life. My parents forced me to eat it when I was a child. Don't like the texture, don't like the taste, don't like the smell, don't like the way it smells when it's cooking. I don't like broccoli. Sounds so factual, right? And yet, nothing about that is provable to every single person on the planet. That makes it 
a thought, an opinion. Now, sometimes we'll have opinions and we'll know that they're opinions. I don't like broccoli. I mean, you know that that's an opinion because you know that other people do like broccoli. We, we get that when we are saying that we like something or don't like something. Okay, that, that's definitely an opinion. That's definitely a thought that we're having. And that's, that, that feels pretty reasonable. But what about, what about something that feels very factual, but isn't, but feels so factual based on evidence that we can find, based on opinions that we have, based on other thoughts that we can't quite get under it. I'm going to take my earlier example of I'm great at math and I'm going to say I'm not great at math. I mean, it doesn't matter which way I go on this one. If I have thought that numerous times, it's going to feel really factual. I'm going to I'm going to really argue with you if you try and say something like, "No, Paula, you are great at math." I'm going to be like, "No, actually as a matter of fact, I have trouble remembering what things add up to or how to multiply. Sometimes I need to get a calculator out for really simple formulas or simple division. I I don't think I'm great at math." Now, when I said it that way, I don't think I'm great at math. You recognize it as a thought. But when you tell yourself something like, I'm not great at, we don't recognize that as a thought. When we tell ourselves something like, I'm having trouble with eating the right number of calories, or I'm having trouble sticking to my protocol, I'm having trouble with, I mean, you name it, honestly, you can come up with examples better than I can, because frankly, I'm drawing a blank right now, and I'm drawing a blank? is a thought. How is that not a fact? I could prove to you that I could not come up with another example, except that I couldn't prove that to you. (laughs) You'd have to take my word for it. It's something going on in my own head. And that means it's a thought. I thought that I was drawing a blank. And from that thought, that created a feeling of, well, for me, really quickly, it created a feeling of desperation because I really wanted to give you another example. But then I didn't have another example because of the thought I'm drawing a blank. My friends, your thoughts are powerful. And every single thing you think is a thought. Whatever you just thought about that sentence that I said is a thought. Whatever you think about anything is a thought. Every single thing you think is powerful. It's creating something in your life. Let's come back to the I'm drawing a blank. It's interesting. I'm drawing a blank. Sounded very factual in my head. I couldn't come up with another example. And I thought, I'm drawing a blank. That desperation feeling created for me sort of a panicky. It was very fleeting, very tiny, almost unnoticeable, except for the fact that I'm talking about it. So therefore, I am noticing it. That little panicky, my heart started pounding, started kind of trying to cast about looking for a thought, but I am drawing a blank. I had closed myself off from being able to find another example because of the thought I'm drawing a blank. If I would not have thought I'm drawing a blank, I probably, and there might have been some hesitation, there might have been some casting about, there might have been a long silence that I would have had to edit out of the podcast, but I probably would have come up with another example, but my thought, I'm drawing a blank, created a reality in that teeny tiny moment where I could not find another example because I thought I couldn't. This plays out for you thousands of times a day. 
because every single thing you think is a thought. Every thought you have creates a feeling. And some of them are so minuscule, so fleeting, so tiny, you would probably not notice them unless you were really, really, really searching for them. Every single feeling drives actions and inactions. And the list doesn't have to be exhaustive. For me, the action was casting about for another idea and yet not being able to find one, not really truly looking for another idea because I had already thought that I was drawing a blank. Your feelings drive actions and inactions which create results. My result was that I had a blank because I thought I'm drawing a blank. The reason you want to know what is a thought, the reason why this is so important is because every single thing you think is a thought. When you think, I don't know what I'm thinking, that's a thought. When you think, I can't find my thoughts, that's a thought. And let's follow that through. When you think, I can't find my thoughts, it's very much like I'm drawing a blank, isn't it? I can't find my thoughts. Actually, it's slightly different. I'm drawing a blank brought up for me a very panicky sort of a feeling. I can't find my thoughts for me creates a defeated feeling. And then when I'm defeated, I won't do much. Kind of shut myself down, kind of close in kind of just let myself be in this defeated feeling, sitting in that defeated feeling, creates for me a situation in which I cannot find my thoughts because I am not looking for them. I'm just sitting in my defeat. Every single thing you think is a thought. And I'm going to let you think about that. <laughs> My friends, you know I actually want to hear your thoughts about what is a thought. You can feel free. You can come find me. I'm on social. I'm in my Facebook groups. I'm on YouTube. I'm everywhere, baby. That's a thought. <laughs> I hope that this was helpful for you. Also a thought. I'll talk to you again soon. <sighs> that sounds so factual. But it's a thought about the future. It hasn't happened yet. So right now, I'll talk to you again soon. Is still a thought. Every single thing you think is a thought. Thanks for listening, friends. So are you totally loving this mindset work and you really want to do it like, you know, every day in order to get your goal? Then my friend, you need to join the Get Your Goal group. It is my personal and private, very interactive coaching and accountability group where every day we talk about your mindset and we get your goal. You can learn all about it at paulabfitness.com slash get dash your dash goal. I'll see you in the goal group.